Good afternoon, teachers. So welcome to my session for today, Harnessing the Power of Mobile Games as a, as a Teaching Strategy Using Classcraft. Now, what you're looking right now is the logo, the old logo of Classcraft. Um, as we proceed, uh, now you will be seeing this blue and yellowish color of logo of Classcraft if you try to Google it um, on your own. Okay. Uh, just an overview, the reason why Classcraft was created is to make school more relevant to students and meaningful by creating playful and collaborative learning experiences that teach the whole child. It's more than just the typical classroom, especially with the ongoing pandemic and all the online classes. I think we can harness the power of Classcraft in turning our classes into games. But before I proceed with my talk for today, how familiar are you with the images that you are seeing right now? Maybe I can I can give you around 30 seconds to type on the YouTube comment. How far do you know about these images? And what are they? If you know some of the characters there, you may also want to type it on the comment section. Okay. 20 more seconds. All right, yeah, correct. Okay, so actually, for most of you, you know these images very well. Maybe you are playing this. The the ones the the ones with a lot of people on top um is a game called Mobile Legends. Highly addictive. I play that myself, but I cannot say I'm really addicted to it. Okay, then another one is Dota, Defense of the Ages. It's somewhat similar then to how it's game, how it is played uh, in Mobile Legends. And then um, the oldest one, which is actually offline, is what we call the Dungeons and Dragons. Okay. Also, for those who are aware about how these are called, they are called RPG or role-playing games. In definition, a role-playing game... Um, it's a game in which players assume a role of characters in a fictional setting. So just like for Mobile Legends, before a team is created, there should be a good set of um, representatives from each of the characters. A mage, um, a, um, a support, a tank, a fighter, and all those things. From which Classcraft is also will also be connecting, will also be connecting Classcraft to those kind of roles later. Um, before we proceed, let's just have some definition of terms. What is gamification? It's actually the process of applying game-related principles, uh, particularly those relating for user engagement experience. So, uh, reward system, giving them battle points, um, giving them deductions because uh, they fought against a boss. All those things will have to be harnessed in our classroom setup with the use of Classcraft. Um, gamification is not new. As early as 1980, um, there has been a study about it of what makes things what make things learn. A study of intrinsically motivating computer games, and they have been thinking about why students or why younger people are quite addictive to some games. This is the time when Super Mario's um, family computer are being created. Super Mario's is being played and introduced. This is that era. Later on, in 2002, after that, eh, um, there has been an explanation about how to use the same feeling of playing a game in non-game setup, such as in public policy issues, in creating um, policies for uh, that concerns the public. And then eventually, the term gamification was coined in 2003 by a paper written by Nick Pelling. Now, gamification in education is then what we have to understand so that we know what Classcraft is. Or more than just Classcraft, it's harnessing what the, um, the power of mobile games into our classroom. Um, it would not ask you to students to make their own game. It, it depends. Maybe you are teaching um, uh, software design, then maybe... In a way, yes, but it's not that way. It's not just. It's not like gamification. Okay, you create your own game. No, it's not like that. It's the. Um, it's when they are playing online games and the feeling of 
intense emotion, excitement, that is what is that 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 is what will be harnessed uh, from the players or the students to be translated into their classroom. It operates under the assumption that the kind of engagement that the gamers experience with games can be translated to educational context towards the goals of facilitating learning and influencing student behavior. Now ask yourself, if you are playing mobile games, what is your end purpose? And that your end purpose is to destroy the enemy's base, right? In education, what is our end purpose? Our end purpose is for our students to learn and apply all the necessary information they, le they learn into real world situations. And if we have that mindset of translating the game Mobile Legends into educational purposes, then if the students can in Mobile Legends destroy an enemy camp, then in classroom, they would not destroy a different camp, but rather they would build upon uh, the society from which they will apply all their learnings in the greater society in the future. Um, try to imagine the, a person you know who's addicted to Mobile Legends, to playing an online game. They would voluntarily just get their phone uh, and they would know where to open the app without even knowing. It's as if their bodies physically would know where the app is located already. And that's the kind of voluntary thing we want to harness from the students once we introduce to them what Classcraft is. Um, it is their belief, Classcraft, that the classroom can be reimagined using technology and a lot of things that would maximize um, students' collaboration, empathy, leadership, and communication and self-expression that are critical pieces in helping prepare them for the changes they will face as adults. Because later on in Classcraft, I will show you they can be group. And each group needs to have a representative. There should be a healer, a mage, and a warrior. Um, Multi-platform, just to give you an idea, if you are using Google Classroom as an LMS, the list of students from your Google Classroom can be um, generated. Can can be gener uh, The list of your students in Google Classroom can be imported to Classcraft. Okay, so let's proceed with the gameplay and how it is played. Um, these are the different tools you will be maximizing using Classcraft. We have here the Wheel of Destiny, Ride the Survey, and so on and so forth. Later, I will be introducing you to all of this. One that I really maximize and I think would be really useful when it comes to formative assessment using Classcraft in formative assessment is this quest. Though this would really require teachers to really be creative in the way they would present their class. Just like me, I'm a CLE teacher and I found it quite difficult yet fulfilling for me to have created a different storyline just so I can show to my students what it means to apply the situations I am discussing um, in a different scenario or more so in the real life situation. Okay, and later on as well, um, I would also introduce to you something that Classcraft has introduced online to use Classcraft as a tool for remote learning. So let me just open my Classcraft account. So here. Okay, so here is the, the teacher's dashboard in Classcraft. Here is the list of all my stu of all my classes on Classcraft, in Classcraft rather. But for the sake of privacy, I will only be using the demo class provided by Classcraft. So let's begin. Once we click this demo class, we are automatically led to this demo class from which there are already students. So we have Hill Wilmore. He's a healer and he's level 16. On his team are two warriors. Okay, so here Wilmer Tineo and then another warrior, Sigrid. Okay, this is not a good balance of teammates because they lack a mage. But later on, when it comes to their powers, they need the mage's power as well in so much as the mage needs the other characters as well. So on this um, leftmost part, we can see a quick access tools, tool 
of all the important things that you need to access, just like the game dashboard, which is this. Class tools, the one I showed you a while ago, the quest. Messaging, actually, you, we can use Classcraft as well to communicate to students. Analytics, the class settings, and then actually Classcraft has a background audio. Eh. Usually, I turn it off there. Okay, so delving deeper, if we click going back to Wilmer Brutus, by the way, the list of names here are shown in alphabetical order using their surnames. So if we click here, if we uh, we are looking right now at Wilmer Brutus, okay, he's, he, here is his HP. HP means his health points. AP means action points, XP experience points, and then GP or gold points. Um, you can see later that this image of, uh, of a healer is not the basic image. Since Wilmer is already level 16, he was able to buy a lot of um, clothes and different items for himself. That's why he ended up looking at looking at that way. Okay, so here are some of his powers like heal, sainthood, and ardent faith. And if I click here, what sainthood means, it would give me a definition of what it is. So sainthood, if he used this power, he would be the healer can stand up and open or close a window. I don't know how this is really a Filipino context, but this is what Classcraft is providing us. But what is good about this is that we are not limited to what Classcraft is providing us. Okay, later, I will show you how you can edit those different um, abilities of a healer, a mage, and um, a warrior. So under Wilmore, we can also see where, what group he belongs to, the bashful raccoons um, if we click this actually we can see the members here on top if we click here teams we can see the list of teams my class have okay so there are teams from which i group them with two with three uh yeah and with one just so i can give you an idea how you can group them if i click here class this is an overview of all my students with their health points, current health points, action points, XP, and then gold points. Okay, next. So, if we click here, settings, we will be led here. So, settings, and then, this is actually my personal Classcraft account, from which I have already edited how each of their abilities are described. So, say for example, for a mage, a mage, say for example, if they are already on the right level, their character is on the right level, they can, a mage can learn this ability, say for example, time warp. And how did I define it? The mage gains an extra three minutes to finish a group activity. So say for example, if you are a mage in a group and you need more time in finishing a group work, then you can activate your ability time warp so that your group can be given extra 3 minutes. Yet, if you use this, you will be using 25 action points. Okay? That's one thing that we need to consider. And there are still a lot. That's just an example for a mage. Now, what about for warriors? Warriors are usually the... Um, I consider them the smart students because they need to be strong enough to face the teacher's questions. Those are the challenging things. So therefore, uh, say for example, uh, here, his ability ambush, the warrior can call a teammate's help when his given answer is incorrect. So though we think that the warrior in assigning your students who a warrior will be, say for example, you assigned a warrior as a smart student, as the smartest in a group, then he can always try to raise his hand and give correct or incorrect answer. Yet, if he fails to give a correct answer, the warrior can uh, call a teammate's help when his given answer is incorrect. And why is that so? So that the group would not uh, get affected if the teacher would give them a deduction. But then he would use 20 of his action points. A healer, of course, would provide healing. And he's the one to... 
uh, uh, provide some things that the mage cannot. So uh, usually he gives he gives health points to the members. So say for example, um, if if we think that the warrior is the smartest student in a group, then the healer can become the support. Okay. So say for example, his ability heal three. A teammate gains 30 HP, and he cannot just give this to any member of his team, but he needs to always think of who is the best member to receive this 30 HP. More so, if he's really thinking, and if the warrior requests for it, then he can do so. And they cannot do it actually uh, on their own. They have to approach the game master, which is the teacher, for the heal tree to take effect to any member of the group. Okay? So that's one. Those are powers. Behaviors under the game settings. Okay, so let me just go back here first. So players. So let's say for example, how can we maximize this as uh, in terms of classroom management? So say for example, Wilmer has been a very good student and I want to give him an extra credit for that by giving him experience points. So if I click here plus point, Wilmer say for example, only at least raise his hand to speak, trying the effort to do so, then I give him 50 experience points for that. Then, he what, it is applied to him. And then he gains more, he gains more, he, he levels up. But if Wilmore does a negative behavior, let's say um, speaking out of turn, though say for example, he raised his hand, he raised his hand, teacher, teacher, I want to recite, yet he shouted um, his answer without him being called, then speaking out of turn, that's minus 5 HP. Okay, then you can see here on the side what the warriors of his group can do. And also, I think Wilmer is a, um, is a warrior. So, uh, is he a warrior nga ba? So, no, sorry. Wilmer is a healer. So, if I give him a deduction of speaking out of turn, then you can see automatically how his other members can protect him. The warriors so they can protect only if they give um if they say yes to wilmer's request to protect him again this is collaborative it's not automatic so it's still the game master's decision eventually and the group's decision whether wilmer will be given will uh, let wilmer take the damage or the other two members of the group will be protecting him so say for example right now i will and what if Sigrid said yes, then Sigrid protects. He used, Sigrid protect, Sigrid used the, her power to protect one of her teammates. So use power here. So eventually Sigrid, um, AP points will have to be given a deduction because she used one of her abilities. Okay, so that's one. These are actually preset given already by Classcraft, but again, you can really tweak this based on your own. Going back to settings, you can see here behavior. And then all these things I have edited personally for to suit my class. So like this one, um, participating without being noisy. I always give them plus 200 points. Um, as a CLE teacher, I want my altar to be fixed for every class that I enter. And this is one way I, I actually ask them to do so. So fix the altar. There are some students who whose characters wants to level up. They would go to me, teacher, I fix our altar. And so, because of that, I gave him plus 25 points. Um, there are times when during activities in the school, I have to ask them to bring flowers for the altar. I also added that. Okay, so for negative behaviors naman, uh, dirty classroom, of course, inappropriate comments, no answer, even though they have been asked to represent their group, yet they did not produce good answer, then still I would give them deduction for that. And all these things, it depends on your creativity. Okay? Now, moving forward. Okay, so a while ago, I made mention about this class tools okay just to give you just to give you a quick overview of what class tools are wheel of destiny is just a random name picker of a specific student or a team 
if I want my if I want my students to recite, mm-hmm. then it can be either by team or by player. So if I click player here, a random student will be called, and it depends whether his answer is correct. Then I can give him a positive behavior. If he did not participate well during that time, then I will also give him negative behavior for that. But then again, I there's one thing: do not always use the negative behavior against the students because eventually they would think that everything that they do is just good for nothing. So always do some processing as well. Okay, so that's one. Uh, okay, Riders of Bay. This is random events. Every time I enter a classroom, my students would say to me, Chair, let's play a random event. And that's what we have always been doing <clears throat> after an opening prayer. So if I click here, see event, this is a random activity. Uh, the Grinch, the title is The Grinch. The Grinch broke in your house and grew in Christmas. Okay, I think I created this uh, during December period. And so, again, you can be creative. And where can we edit this? Again, in class settings. And then, sorry, I go back here. Because, yeah, in class settings and then random events. You can be very creative. Say, if I want to create a new event, a random event applies to one, one member of the team, one, one member of the class, one per team or all of the students. So say, for example, one. It would ask me which one, the team, a warrior or mage healer, random with the most X, a, XP, it still depends. This is highly customizable. Effect, this is when you can be creative for being noisy. Ah, no, it's the effect. Um, minus um, HP. Say, for example, um, why uh, being noisy? But you can be creative. A while ago, it was titled The Grinch Entered the House. So it can be a description as well here. So it's minus HP. So say, for example, minus 5 HP. There. Always, plut- always include minus if you meant for it as a deduction. Okay, then add the effect. Ah, sorry. Ah, save there then automatically the the random events is updated so that's one actually i re- i removed some of the random events class craft created by which the game master or the teacher needs to sing needs to dance i will not do that in class but if you want to then you may do so as well okay so that's one um this shrine of patience is an updated tool but this is uh, a way by which students can give positive feedback to their classmates as well. Okay? It's a like button or a heart button, equivalent to a heart button on Facebook. But more than that because it's, it's more verbal. Okay? Uh, the white mountain is a typical timer. You can set the maximum number of time and then just click start. Okay? Pause. Okay? We go back again to class tools. And then forest run is a typical timer, but if they finish, if groups or students finish on time, if I click finish here, the race is over. And if I say only one student um, can be given the reward for today, then I would give that to a specific player. So say for example, if um, Sylvester finished ahead, then I would give him a positive behavior for that. Going back to class tools, Treasures of Taburos is the grading system. I would not be delving into that since I myself did not maximize that as well because we have a different grading system. Okay, This one I really love. This is volume meter. This is if students, if you want to keep your students quiet during reading time, say for example, if you want to ask the students to, read, six o'clock. to read a certain activity, then this is uh, a reading material then this is what you will be uh, doing so say for example if they remain quiet for the time period so i would give they would all be receiving 35 experience points 
then maybe some gold points or if they fail to be quiet with the given period they will all be giving my they will all be deducted 15 health points so i will add here timer and for five minutes they need to be quiet while reading it and then click next uh, by the way you have to approve the microphone uh, uh, you have to approve the permission for Classcraft to access the microphone because that is what is will be used by Classcraft. So, usually if I set it to the highest point, it's really chaotic. I would set it usually around here. Then I click start. There. Whatever noise is created, it will be detected. Even the teacher's voice. Okay? So if they were quiet enough five minutes, I click finish, then they all receive the reward. But if the volume meter reached the maximum noise level, then they will be given deductions. Okay? So if I click finish, everyone will be given that point. Okay? Boss battles, this is when you can turn your quizzes into a typical um old style computer game like street fighter i think so since i'm a cle teacher i have an activity here for when i taught them um advent so new battle i want to call random students start battle yeah then click check then we begin uh so sharice is called she needs to stand she needs to answer this jesus cousin's name is and if she said St. John the Baptist, and I click reveal answer, and she answered correctly, I will click here correct answer so that her character will attack the monster. If not, the monster will attack her if she gives me, if she gave me a wrong answer. So correct answer. Oh, but yet she missed. These are some things that also happen during this live game. Okay? The monster may miss, the students may miss. Okay? And yeah. That would be all. One important thing that I would want to share for this tutorial or an information is to use the maximum, how to maximize quest. Okay. So if you click here quest, you will be led here. This is when you, re when you can really turn your classroom into your activities in the classroom into a, a very creative way of storytelling so this once i created the king's effect and the wayfinder the wayfinder i taught them the lesson about the judges of israel in which the main topic uh, and the main idea is that uh, the cycle of sin of israelites and so the story goes this way actually i have to be creative when it comes to this so the story goes this way uh the mage in each group the wire in each group, the healer will have to have some activity while they are going through this story. But there are also tasks here. Go to this link. This is a Google Drive and all these things. It depends upon how creative you are and well planned ahead of time before you give this to your students. Okay, so investigate there. They, these are the tasks. These are this is the part of the story. I would also give them my I would also give my students a heads up that the story is in connect is connect is connected with the task. Okay. And as an example, here is an output of one of my students. So yeah, he was able to apply the concepts I taught them about the the judges of Israel with the use with the help of the guidance of that quest I created on Classcraft. Okay? Uh, then, yeah. Okay, so my time is almost over, but let me just inform you that you are not alone in creating your own quests. You can also go to marketplace.classcraft.com and here you can find a, a bunch of pre-made quests already. So, I... Say, for example, biology. There are already a ton of, tons of pre-made quests for specific subjects already. So, yeah. Then you can just edit it, actually. 
my quests have been uploaded on Classcraft already and is free to use as well. Okay. And one last thing is that I'd want to share to you uh, this one, right? Uh, a tool for remote learning. Okay. So... Okay, so this one. Uh, with what is happening right now, Classcraft try to guide, uh, Classcraft's team try to envision how life is using, uh, how life is using Classcraft as a rem as a guide to remote education. So how is that? A while ago, I shared to you um, behaviors. These are behaviors before the pandemic. These are all applicable during the pandemic. But what Classcraft is encouraging teachers who are using Classcraft is through how to create a digital community. If you were present last week when Ms. Viana mentioned about, uh, shared about digital citizenship, this is when we can apply those rules in their online setup using Classcraft. So, here are some of the list of the behaviors you can incentivize in Classcraft, like being on time for a video lesson and all these things. Um, and these are already some of digital citizenship that are aligned with the ISTE standards for students. I think that's all. Thank you.